The story begins with a man named Arif who was having a lot of fun with his wife. They used to stay together and love each other a lot. One day Arif's very old friend named Lager comes to him and tells him that he has to show him something very important. So, Arif blindly trusts his friend and goes with him. He takes Arif inside his factory but Arif had no idea what was going to happen with him. Lager betrays Arif and captures him inside his factory. The truth was that Lager used to love Arif's wife very much, but because of Arif's marriage, he couldn't come between them. That's why Lager had built a time machine after years of hard work. He planned to send the real Arif back in time so that he could live Arif's life and love his wife. Lager turns on the time machine with his assistant, sending Arif back hundreds of years. Arif directly travels back in time to the era of dinosaurs, where humans had not yet developed. As soon as Arif arrives, he encounters small deeps who become very excited upon seeing Arif. However, Arif tries hard to communicate with them through gestures, but none of it makes sense to the Ebs because their minds were not ready for such concepts. This means Arif is completely stuck in this place and can never go back to his time. Now, Arif starts spending some days with all these Ebs. Arif starts considering them like his own family who sleep curled up with him. However, Arif has to face the challenges of changing weather in this place. After some days pass like this, Arif decides that he will search for people like him, tribesmen, because he cannot spend his entire life with these Ebs. So, without delaying further, Arif sets out on his journey into the jungle. Although he encounters many wild animals and snakes on the way that could kill him, Arif continues to move forward. Suddenly, a very large dinosaur appears in front of Arif, approaching him as if to eat him. At that moment, Arif notices that this dinosaur is actually a female and was just protecting her eggs. So, Arif gestures to the dinosaur to make her understand that he won't harm her eggs. The dinosaur lets Arif go and then on his way, Arif sees a very large beehive, which he grabs and starts eating the honey inside it. However, he doesn't realize that the larger bee is starting to chase him, whose size was actually quite large. Arif manages to save himself by quickly hiding behind a tree. However, the bee still manages to sting him. When Arif's gaze falls on the tree, he notices some tribes people sitting there who had knocked him unconscious. They had brought him into their cave, where the other tribes people resided. When Arif regained consciousness after a while, he was quite fascinated to see the reactions of the tribes people who were interested in him too, as they had never seen clothes like his before. All the tribes people were wanting to kill Arif, but he immediately goes to their leader and tries to make them understand that he is also human like them, but from the future. Although the tribes people couldn't understand the human language, Arif makes them understand through gestures so that all the tribes people realize that Arif is not a threat to them. Now, the leader of the tribe called Karga arrives who wanted to completely obliterate the tribe and absorb them into his own. Karga's army was quite large, so he could do whatever he wanted. At this time, Karga comes to choose some people from among the other tribe's residents who he wanted to join his army. Among all of them, Karga had also chosen Arif, who starts going with him now. Arif had already been captured by the residents of the other tribe while on the way. During the journey, a tribesman named Tez had his hand injured by a stone, causing him a lot of pain. However, medical science had not developed at this time, so the tribe's people began to think that Tez had died and they started putting stones on him. But then Arif comes to them and says that he can fix it in a moment. Arif holds Tez's hand and straightens it out, applies some strange-looking ointment, and then ties a piece of wood around his hand, which straightens Tez's hand completely. The rest of the tribe's people are quite impressed by Arif's technique. After coming to the tribe, Kavalia, Tez's father, thanked Arif very much because he had saved his son's life. Recently, Kavalia had found some peculiar artwork masks from his son's room. When Kavalia asked his son about them, he explained that he really enjoys making all these artworks. However, Kavalia was not pleased with all these things because he told that a few years ago his father had seen a flying saucer coming from the sky. Some people had come out of it who were from the future and gave a football to him. But when his father went a little closer to the flying saucer, they were completely burned and he died. Since then, Kavalia wanted to completely ignore all strange things and keep modern people away from them. He believed that whoever dies goes into the depths of the sky. So, he had built a large tower so that he could bring his father back to life. Now, Kavalia tells Arif that he has to go straight to the top and bring his father back. Arif had to reluctantly agree to this and he starts climbing up continuously. After reaching the top, Kavalia's father was not there, but a man was present whom he had sent first. As soon as the man saw Arif, he fell down from the top and died. 
Here, Aerith realizes that all these things were a misconception that had settled in the minds of these tribespeople. Aerith somehow manages to come down and the tribespeople become very excited because whoever had gone up to the tower top had never returned. Aerith was the first person to show such courage. Now, taking Aerith along, Dezo goes to his cave where he had made quite different types of artwork. Aerith becomes quite happy seeing these artworks because they were very modern. Tessa had also told Aerith that he had made a photo of his girlfriend behind his back, whose name was Minnie and she was the daughter of the king of another tribe. Now, when Tessa comes to Aerith with his father Kavalia where the meeting was going on, Kavalia tells Tessu that he has chosen a girl for him to marry. But Tessa says that he loves someone else. After knowing all these things, Kavalia gets quite angry and throws his son and Aerith out of there. Tessu immediately goes to Minnie, whom he loves. However, Minnie does not like Aerith at all because he had made fun of her father. But Aerith shows Minnie the painting that Tessu had made on his back, which makes Minnie believe him and asks her tribe to keep him. Now, Aerith starts telling all the tribe's people that although he is stuck here, he will help them with all the techniques he knows so that they can progress towards modernization. So, Aerith and Tessa gather all the things made by Aerith and start creating various types of items, making it much easier for the tribe's people to work. They start eating together, which also provides them with proper nutrition. Gradually, their entire village transforms into a modernized colony. But when Kavalia learns about all this, he sends his chief, Karga, to inspect all these things. Karga comes with all his men to inspect all the things made by Aerith. After a while, when Aerith and Tessa learn about this, they become very excited because all the modern items made by them have now been completely finished. Now, they will have to fix all these things in any way possible. Aerith was with Tessu in this endeavor. Kavalia had already come to Aerith and threatened him that he should quickly compensate them or else the consequences would be very bad. But Aerith was not accepting all these things at all. Then finally, Aerith invites Kavalia and his other people for a football match. If he wins, then Kavalia and all his people will not bother the people of his village anymore and if Aerith loses, he will build a tower and bring Kavalia's father back. Aerith was feeling that all these people do not know how to play football, but this was his misconception. Kavalia and all his companions were quite good at playing football. After returning to his tribe, Aerith noticed that no one here knows how to play football, but still, he selects some people who could play football well and trains them quite well. He plans how we will play and after working hard, the day of the match arrives. As soon as the match starts between Kavalia and Aerith's team, after some time, all the members of Kavalia's team were continuously scoring goals. They had already scored four goals, while Aerith's team had zero goals. But still, Aerith, along with his teammates, executes a plan he had made and scores one or two goals according to that plan. Kavalia's team was also cheating a little because they had used dinosaurs to throw many teammates into the air. Now Aerith must have realized that he has to manage everything. He also started scoring many goals with great difficulty and now the score was tied at four goals each. Due to which the goalkeeper's senses are blown away and now Aerith had scored one extra goal so Aerith had won this match. Kavalia also appreciates Aerith and he tells us that we will never trouble your tribe again. Immediately after that, a strange portal opens up from which a lady emerges. That lady was none other than Aerith's wife because when the logger came to change Aerith's fate, he forgot to change his wife's. This leads to Aerith's wife knowing about the money. And that's why she comes to help him with the time machine. Aerith was very happy as he returns to the old world with his wife, leaving all the tribesmen behind. In this world, all the tribesmen knew that he was an imposter. So everyone was increasing their efforts to kill him and our story ends this way.